it looks square enough. <clears throat> Sometimes a new angle, whether it be literal or figurative, is needed to get through a little bit of creator block. Hey y'all, thank you for checking out my channel, whether this is your first time or your 50th time, I really appreciate it. Today, I have a product for you that I'm pretty excited to share about. It is the LensGo 318C version two. And the reason that I'm excited about this is because LensGo apparently saw one or multiple of my other videos and they reached out to me asking if I would review and test this. And so I'm just really excited about that. Now I will say a couple things. Number one is yes, they reached out to me and they sent me the mic for free, uh, but they are not paying me anything extra. They have not provided any scripting. They have not provided any guidelines. So all of the views that I'm going to share here are my own. They don't get to view this before I post it. And I just wanted to share that with you right off the bat so that you didn't think that I was just taking a script that they provided and reading off of a teleprompter, which I actually wish I owned a teleprompter at some points because I can be really bad at multiple takes. So before we talk any further about this mic system, number one is you're not going to have to wait until the very end of this video to find out what does it sound like? Does it sound very good? Because I'm already wearing it, as you can see right here. That is the one of the transmitters and the receiver and the other transmitter are currently on the R. So this, this entire video will be filmed using audio from the LensGo 318C version two. How does it sound? Uh, one cool little feature that I'm just gonna go ahead and get out of the way real quick is double click there. Reverb, maybe, maybe. There it goes, reverb, 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 reverb. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Oh, maybe. There we go, all right. So with a double tap of the power button on the transmitter, you can turn on the reverb function. It's just a fun little built-in uh, silly thing that uh, just, it kind of sets it apart in that way, but then you double tap it again and you get back to normal mode. The biggest pro I feel like for this system is it is so unique. It is not three black squares or whatever it is that come in some of these kits. It has a unique look because the two transmitters are magnetically attached to the receiver. It is all in one nice, easy little package. It's easy to take with you, but yeah, it's just so unique. Then you break off the transmitters and you're able to use them. You've got two, so you can either use it solo like I'm doing here, or you can use them for interview settings. But for as unique of a system as it is, it's honestly pretty simple. It's about as close to a plug and use, plug and go, plug and play system as you're going to get. Because again, you take the transmitter off, you plug in the cord from the receiver to your camera, and there are only three buttons on this entire thing. There's one power button on the receiver and one power button each on each of the transmitters. Then there are only one, two, three, then there are only five LED indicator lights. There's an indicator light on each transmitter. There's three on the receivers. One is for the power slash charging of the receiver. And then the other two tell you if the transmitter is in use and if it's paired. And so now before we get into any of the specs, I want you to hear this in a few other real world situations. One of my favorite tests to do was when I uh, did the comparison between the seven rhymes and the Rode Wireless Go 2, I put the camera and the receivers here in my living room, and then I went all around the house, outside and everything, and so I'm gonna do that real quick. Let's go ahead and do that, all in one shot. So I have now switched over to the Go. So I've now switched over to the GoPro, and we're going here through the dining room, and this is the route that I took last time. So you kind of get to see a little bit of the house. Might be a little dirty, sorry about that, Lar. Out into my garage, it is, an absolute mess in here because we had to get everything down from the attic for Christmas. And now we're kind of trying to get ready for that. So got my water pail and we're gonna keep going on out. Back up here into the kitchen. And this is the kitchen where all the magic happens for meals. And as you can probably hear on the mic, filling it up, filling the water pail up. And I kind of need to do this anyways because some of the plants outside are kind of wilting and I need to take care of the inside plants too, but that's for another time here in a little bit. All right, that's enough. All right, I'm gonna take the water pail 
And this is, again, the exact same path that I took with the Seven Rhymes and with the Wireless Go 2. And I can actually even reuse that footage. Oh, there we go. Whew. All right. And now back outside. So we are now outside. And this is about the farthest point that I did with both of those. Watering these plants. And coming over here, watering these little pansies or whatever they are. Right, and coming over here, same thing. So again, hopefully this sounds pretty decent and we have done that and now going to just retrace my steps. Uh, what I did was came back in the house, through the foyer, through the dining room, kitchen, garage, you know the drill. So yeah, this was the exact same path that I took for both the Seven Rhymes DW20 as well as the Rode Wireless Go 2. And then I came back in, and I'm pretty sure I came this way. I may come the other way, but so I came back in, and then here I am. So another really good test is this is a pretty controlled setting. This is what it sounds like inside. I've got one fan going. You can kind of hear traffic, I think, uh, from the road outside but there's not a whole lot of other noise. So this is what it sounded like when I was attempting the first time to film this out at John's house. This is outside. Almost took off with the battery tender on. Ooh, that would have been, been interesting. <laughs> but he brought out the Ferrari so that we can try and test to see just how well these three suction cup systems are actually gonna work. And I'm gonna come over here and I apologize that it's a little loud. And so now let's go through some of the specs for this. Uh, it is a 2.4 gigahertz system. It has a 360 omnidirectional mic. Um, it is one mic there at the top. It's not like there are multiple mics trying to catch everything. It has a seven hour battery life. They also claim that the distance that you can be from the receiver with your transmitter is about 100 meters or 320, 330 feet. So let's go ahead and give that a test real quick. All right, so this is gonna be a distance test for the LensGo 318C version two. I have it here on the lapel and I have just counted off a little over 300, close to 330 feet. And so that's what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna keep walking. And I'm just going to keep talking, talking one, two, three, four. It is a beautiful day here in Augusta, Georgia. Uh, temperatures got very nice and low. Got a little bit of frost on the cars. But the temps are going to go back up down in South Georgia as I head down to the Okefenokee Swamp this weekend. And this is a test one, two, three, four. Test one, two, three, four. So this would be a roughly 150 feet, 150 feet uh, in this area because I'm halfway to my 300, 330 mark. Testing one, two, testing one, two, three. Testing one, two, one, two, three. Curious to see how this sounds. Like I said, they claim up to 100 meters or 330-ish feet. So I think that I have stepped off quite enough for that. Testing one, two, testing one, two. Still within line of sight of the receiver. I have the transmitter here on my lapel, one, two, three, four. Testing one, two, three, four. And now I am at roughly the 300 to 330 foot range right here, trying to keep things out from in between. So this is roughly 330 feet. And this is what it sounds like at that distance. Testing one, two, three, four. Again, nice and chilly, nice long direct line of sight here. Roughly 330 feet if my counting and my math and my steps were uh, correct. Um, let's kind of look at what comes in the kit. Again, you get one receiver, two transmitters magnetically attached. And part of the cool factor of this is it actually does come in two colors. You can get it in black or white, depending on your preference. It also comes with a TRS to TRS cord, as well as a TRS to TRRS cord. But also in the kit are two of these magnetic little clips. And these are great because you can attach the transmitter to you two different ways. One is the way that I have it right now. You can put the clip on the inside with the magnet facing out, and then you, mag uh, you magnetically attach the transmitter through the material of your shirt, and it just kind of hovers there. Then the other way is you can put the transmitter on the magnet, and you can clip it somewhere, kind of like you see people do all the time. Actually, a couple of people I've seen have started to like clip it to their hat and point it down. 
different little angle, I guess. All right, so what are some of the cons to this system? Well, first off, it is a very simple system and it would be nice if there was at least one screen, one screen on the receiver. That way you could monitor a little bit better to see if you're peaking, to make sure that you're picking up sound. A little screen would just be really nice. Another thing that would be really nice is it uses a micro USB port for charging and everything in this world is starting to move to USB-C. Even iPhone is going to be moving to USB-C supposedly in the next couple of years. So I feel like it would have just been nice if they would have gone ahead and done what some other systems have done and put a USB-C charging port on there rather than the micro USB. And my final two cons on this system are that number one, I wish it had a windscreen or a way for you to hook up a lav mic to it because while this is nice that you're able to uh, magnetically attach it here or you're able to clip it where you need it to, there's just something about having a nice, neat look and having the transmitter down at your pocket or on your side and having a line hidden under your shirt to put the mic somewhere else. And then the final con on this is something that a couple companies have done really well is, and that's using the magnet better. I would love it if I could take just the transmitter off and attach it to something, whether it be a car, whether it be for some ambient noise uh, in some kind of setting. It would just be nice if it, could, uh, mag if it could attach to something using that magnet. But now to wrap this up, I will say that this is a pretty cool little setup, especially when you consider the price. This costs under $100. Normally it's right around 90, but I've seen a couple deals, whether it was around Black Friday, Cyber Monday, just a holiday special in general with a special 15% off discount. So if you're looking for a wireless mic system and you can't necessarily afford over $100, this might be a way to get your foot in the door and at least start getting better, cleaner audio while being further away from your camera. But what do you think? How does this compare to, say, the Seven Rhymes DW20 that I tested a few weeks ago? How does it uh, compare to the Rode Wireless Go 2 that I did in that same comparison? How does it sound to maybe a DJI or some other device that you have found? Have you actually tried a LensGo? Because again, this is the version 2, and they've got some other more interesting looking devices out there and some more basic uh, devices out there. But anyways, I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider hitting that thumbs up. I greatly appreciate it. And I will catch you after my Okie Finoki trip so you can expect a lot of fun B-roll from a December Okie Finoki trip. your hands. Loose has come off.